the Minnesota Orchestra has come over for four concerts, two in the proms, Edinburgh Festival and Amsterdam. Is it a big deal? Is that, that, is that trip over here a big deal for the Minnesota Orchestra? Yes, it's a, a major focal point of our season and uh, it's, it, it's an engaging thing to do, it's uh, a fun thing to do. Uh, we feel like we get to bring our game to the world stages and uh, show people that we have a great orchestra in Minnesota. And what are the sort of demands that you have to, that you, you work under when you're on tour? The demands, well, uh, you have to keep yourself in good physical shape, you have to be in good mental shape, uh, you have to be able to conjure your utmost focus and concentration uh, for every performance. You have to uh, eat right, you have to sleep right, you have to get over the jet lag. Uh, you have to take care of yourself if you're sick. I've got a little bit of a cold now, so I'm getting a little extra sleep and taking a few more vitamins. How does that affect your playing then, that, that, that uh, sickness? Ooh. Can it? Well, it, it can, but I think when you get caught up in the moment of performance, you forget about all that because you're focusing on what you're doing and that goes away. That's another, that's another interesting thing that I wanted to touch on to do with, because um, I think I'm right in saying at the beginning of the Brook, you know, there's basically very little else going on apart from a solo from, yeah. from you. Yeah. Beforehand, I mean, I mean, you've been playing with the Minnesota Orchestra for 20 years. Yes. Um, tell me, reassure me, you do still get nervous, don't you? Do you, mm. do you get nervous beforehand? Uh, no. The, the, way, the way I deal with this is... Um, I'm doing my work, and when I have the instrument in my hand, then I'm thinking about what I'm performing. And I don't think about it until I get to the hall, and then I start focusing my concentration. And it's a matter of thinking about what I have to do, as opposed to what might happen or could happen or anything like that. It's, so it's a job? Yeah, at that well, moment in time, it's a job? It's, it's a job, but it's... It's a conjuring of the exact sound I want to hear at the exact moment I want to have it happen. And basically I blank out my mind. I go to a very primitive stage of thinking where I'm just thinking about my sound and what type of sound I want to have and what type of timbre and what type of color and get really deep into the levels of concentration. And I think only of that and then you play well. Otherwise, if you think about anything else, you get in the way of yourself and you could stumble or freak out. Or is that something that you learned early on? I mean, that, that, that kind of self-discipline, that, that focus is obviously part and parcel with being a performer, but is that something that you learned early on or is it experience? Uh, parts of it I kind of learned earlier on. And then as I started reading more about sports psychology and how the Olympic athletes focus themselves, you know, if they thought about what they do in the three seconds that they do their big trick after waiting four years, they wouldn't be able to do it. So they blank their minds out and there's nothing going on up here. It's all very, what they call the lizard brain, where you're just reacting to what you're doing. And so I've disciplined myself in the last probably 20 years since I got in the, the major orchestra that I'm in to uh, really seek that you know, sense of concentration and focus and, and refine that. So, What do you do when it goes wrong? I mean, you know, you must have an off day. There must be a moment where it hasn't quite worked. Is, yeah. that, is that difficult to deal with? Playing the horn, that's going to happen. It's, it's a very difficult instrument. Uh, you have to let that go. You have to say, oops and move on because you're still you still got 50 more minutes of playing to go so uh you've you've, you've got to let yourself be okay with that and and just move on it happens you know we're humans <laughs> years with the Minnesota Orchestra in various roles. Mm -hmm. um, that strikes me as a long time yes. to be sat essentially with the same people, seeing the same faces in rehearsals and concerts and what have you. That, to me, that would drive me mad. <laughs> um, how do you, how is that for you? Do you, do you ever get bored? Do you, how do you maintain interest? For, for me, it's, it's a privilege to play 
principal horn, uh, it's never boring because uh, so many composers write great solos and repertoire for the horn. And playing principal horn, it always keeps you on your toes. Uh, it's something that I enjoy doing. It's something I wanted to do since I was a kid. And I never take it for granted. I feel like it's a privilege to play in a major orchestra, play great repertoire in the great halls with a great conductor. And I actually, I actually have the attitude that it's something I get to do as opposed to something I have to do. If you have to do it, it becomes a job, but it's something I enjoy and I get to do it. It's, it's interesting. I, I, I took on the mentality a couple years ago. I started thinking about this 20 year coming up and I said, I need to enjoy every concert I do from now on because you never know if your teeth are gonna fall out or you're gonna lose your lip or your nerve or whatever. So I need to really enjoy every concert I do and as if it was one of my last. So that's, that's, that's the tact I take. So it never becomes boring. I'm always, always looking forward to playing another concert because you never know when time's gonna run out. Is that a risk then, that your lip will go? Uh, I mean, not yours personally, sure. but as a horn player. It happens, it, it happens. Brass players are usually the first to leave the orchestra uh, with either problems with their chops or their brains. Um, their brains? <laughs> yeah, their brains. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we have a little more physical wear and tear than some of the other instruments. You don't see too many old brass players in orchestras. Um, you do see them, but there's not a whole lot. So uh, they say that brass players peak at age 36, and I'm now 52. So I'm sure that's a mistake. But, the, but, maybe you, but you, 50 is the new 30. Right. And, and <laughs> right. um, I actually have gotten better as a player in the last seven or eight years that I've been principal horn, um, just from a routine of teaching students how I do it and discovering what I can do to be better. Why the so, horn in particular? Why did you choose it? Can you yeah, what did you choose the horn? The horn, um, in high school, I had my own part, which was part of it. And I got to sit in, in an orchestra with uh, strings one time. And I said, wow, this is cool. You know, strings, two oboes, two horns, playing a Haydn symphony. I said, this is something I really, really, really like. I would like to do this. And uh, stuck with it. I had a very good teacher in Florida. And uh, he got me into a great conservatory in Philadelphia. At 17? Is that right? Uh, Were you 17 when you went to university? 17 when I went to the university and I was 20 when I went to, yeah. I got out of high school early and... Uh, wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, wow. Well, it, and then a job at 21, that is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so was that like a playing, a playing job in an orchestra? Yes, yeah. That's when I very young. So it's good, it's good, yeah, yeah. And I knew I was on my way and, you know, I, I had talent and if I worked hard, then eventually I might move up to a bigger orchestra. And I took auditions for years and uh, it was eight years of auditions before I got into the Minnesota Orchestra. So I, I paid my dues. It's a struggle, I mean, certainly from musician friends that I know, Mm -hmm. um, I've seen them graduate and uh, do what might be loosely described as the circuit, lots of freelance stuff, right. lots of unpaid work, and then they get a full-time job. Right. And it strikes me that you have to have an enormous amount of commitment and yes. drive. Yep. Does it need a particular kind of person? You have, you have to have the hunger, we call it, and something you can't teach a student. It's a hunger that you've got to have that job. And, and, like, and can you see that when because you, you teach as well? Can yes. you see that? Yes, and the ones the ones that have it, you know, they may not be the best players, but they're going to work the hardest, and they eventually they won't give up. They keep knocking on the door until they get what they want, and and that's what I did. You know, it was I, I my twenty sixth audition was the one I won in Minnesota. I'd made finals for twenty two of the twenty six, and I was right there being considered for the job, and I didn't get it. And some people would have given up, and I was like, no, I know I'm going to get it one of these days. And I was really lucky. I had a really good day of an audition for a great orchestra, and now I get to play with the Minnesota Orchestra. It's, it's a dream come true.